I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things video short. The God who justifies, who forgives the ungodly. That's the subject of today's Higher Things video short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, share, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, passing on the faith to the next generation, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get our app. It's available on all major platforms. Sharing is caring when it comes to Higher Things content and donate. A tax-deductible gift to Higher Things keeps us making the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults. Oh, do we need that gospel in these dark times? The religion of the world, the religion we're used to, the religion we're... we're condition to think or the way we think religion runs is that we do something for God and then God responds. We get our life together. We get our stuff together. We do things. And then God, maybe if he's in a good mood, responds. We begin the action by doing something. And generally that something is becoming a better person. And I'm not against that, but that's what we generally think it needs to happen. So we get all our stuff together, and then we go to the deity. We go to God. There's another way. The Christian faith actually is completely opposite of that. Let's take a look at the scriptures. And we looked at this. I like to look on Friday sometimes at the Bible class that we're going through. Remember, we do Romans every single day. So this is from Romans chapter 4, okay, beginning with the fourth and the fifth verse. And those of you who wonder why sometimes I have Greek on this side, this side, it's because I can read Greek. To the one who works, his wages is not considered a gift, but considered um, an obligation. But to the one who doesn't work, but believes in the one who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted to him as righteousness. Now, the, the important thing is over there, which is this little Greek word that I've highlighted. So first of all, when you work, you get what you deserve. Like you don't have to go to your boss and say, hey, look, I was wondering if you could be nice enough to pay me. If you have that, then you have a problem. You work, you get your check. You work 40 hours, you get 40 hours back. If you're fortunate enough to be um, a, uh, a, a salaried employee, you work 80 hours and you get paid for 40, basically. Okay, but um, so the one who works, his wages aren't reward. They're just what he deserves. But to the one who does not work, again, in religion speaking, this is the one who doesn't have their stuff together, whose life is still a mess, who's, who, who is a religious loser, who is a failure, who is who doesn't know the handshake to get them into the church, doesn't have church clothes, maybe has markings or something like that, or looks at their life and realizes that they have failed miserably. To the one who doesn't work, but believes in the one who justifies the ungodly. Now, what I love about the, the ungodly here is, is it's defined down here as pertaining to violating the norms of proper relationship to a deity. So if you look at your life and you're like, I don't know how to relate to God. I don't understand God. I don't feel God. I don't have the whole relationship with the deity. That's okay because God sent his son for people who don't have a proper relationship with him. See, it's not like you get your stuff together and then you go to God and God's like, okay, I got this perfect thing for you. God acts and saves people who don't have a relationship with him, who, who don't have their stuff together, who, who look at their life as religious failures. If you were one of those, if you think that you're going to walk into church and the baptismal font's going to boil over because of how bad you are, never fear, JC is here. He's the God who justifies the ungodly. See, I got to tell you, this is, liberating for me. Look, I look at my life. And I know I'm a bad person. I know I'm a sinner. I, I don't do what I should do. And I do do what I shouldn't do. 
I try daily to be a better person, but yet, and I'm going to be judged worse because I got, oh, it's just a mess. And the comfort here is that God doesn't wait for me to get my stuff together. He acts. He sends his son to die for someone like me. And if he died for somebody like me, he died for somebody like you. And so the comfort in all of this world where we feel like religious losers is, hey, if you're a religious loser, if you don't have your stuff together, if you are violating the norms of having a proper relationship with any God, the Christian God, the God who sent his son, the only God there is, the one who died on the cross for your sins and the sins of the whole world, let me tell you about him. Because he saves sinners. If you look at your life, you're like, I don't even feel sorry for what I've done. You are violating the norms for a proper relation with a deity. Don't worry. God has sent his son even for you. And this is real, whether you believe it or not. This was true before you came to terms with it. God acted before you changed. And that is the comfort of this day, Friday, before the third Sunday in Lent, where we're talking about the God who saves people who he shouldn't save. And forgives people who he shouldn't forgive. He is, if you're a person who violates the norms for proper relation to a deity, don't worry. This God's for you and he will save you. He will save you. To the one who doesn't work, but believes in the God who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Your faith, your receiving this Jesus saves We'll talk on Monday about more of this. I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this has been another Higher Things video short.